because my dad, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of celebrating an anniversary in honor of my father today. Uh, exactly one year ago today, my father stopped buying 8-track tapes, so I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> yeah, he's got dads like that. He re refused to give up on the 8-track, and, and he comes up to me not too long ago, and he says, Jerry, you're right, they're going to cassettes. <laughs> I didn't have the, the heart to tell him about the CDs at that point, you know, so... I don't know. My dad's a great guy. He's uh, always been very supportive. I mean, uh, even as a child, I remember one time he sat my brother and myself down. First he said to my brother Tom, he says, you know, Tom, if you set your mind to it, you can do anything you want. Then he turned to me, he said the same thing. He says, you know, Jer, if Tom sets his mind to it, he can do anything he wants. That's what he wants to be so... I remember the first time I went off the high diving board. I was out at the swimming pool because, well, that's where they keep it. And uh, my dad and I were out there. And I, I was out there. I was seven years old. I said, Dad, it seems very high. And, uh, you, you know, and he says, don't worry, Jerry. It's not as high as it looks. And I said, Dad, it seems very high, you know. And he says, don't worry, Jerry. I'll catch you. And uh, I just wanted to say, come on, Dad, let's come back this summer when there's water in the pool. Because... <laughs> My dad's one of these guys, he kind of pisses me off. He's 62 years old, he has twice the energy I do. And uh, he's one of these dads who can build or repair anything. You guys have fathers like that? Can build absolutely or repair anything. And uh, I seriously think with a, and he has twice the energy I do. And uh, I seriously think with a uh, book from Time Life and a gram of cocaine, my dad could build a three bedroom house in about an hour and a half. <laughs> I don't do cocaine. I have friends that do cocaine. Uh, I don't do it myself. Uh, <laughs> I have friends that do cocaine. Uh, I don't do it. I wish I had the money they put up their nose, though. I really do, because, uh, yeah, I'd buy me a big bag of pot with it. <laughs> you know. Stop it. Stop it. Now, I recently quit smoking pot, and, uh, what time is it? Anyone have it? Uh, <laughs> One of the reasons I quit smoking was because it, uh, it was too expensive. It got way too expensive. I was spending $150, $200 a week, and uh, that was just on groceries. And, uh, you know, <laughs> but you get those munchies, don't you? Yeah. My big thing when I smoked pot, my big thing was cheese dip, a Rotel cheese dip over Oreo cookies. Anyone else? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a friend of mine smoked pot and did cocaine, and the same night, he just sat around going, God, I'm tired! <laughs> Showed me how to roll a joint with a dollar bill, and uh, before I got it down, I smoked 36 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, right now, I'm drinking and driving. I got pulled over in Salina for a suspicion of DUI. Oh, What's that? Uh, would you like to buy a foul, sir? Thank you. Uh, I got pulled over sus for suspicion for DUI, and what made it strange is that uh, I got pulled over by McGruff, the crime dog. Oh, yeah. And he asked me, he said, Mr. Long, have you had anything to drink? And I was honest with him. I said, yeah, I've had two beers. And uh, he went ahead and arrested me, claimed it was $14 beers. You know, what do you do? Think of gross and turn to crime? I mean, do you think there's actually drug dealers in South America going, hey, Valdez, we got a ship going to the States tomorrow, man. No way, man. They got a dog over there take a bite out of your ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> Found my girlfriend's G spot the other night. Pretty excited about that. Uh, I wasn't anywhere near where I was looking. Uh, it turns out it was in Foley's. And, uh, she likes to shop. Must be a lowercase G, because I didn't see the sun coming anywhere, so. Uh, uh, I've got one of those girls that, uh, girlfriends that uh, she likes to get in my closet and put my clothes on, you know, and, and she looks better in them than I do. Doesn't that piss you off? I know she, she got in my closet the other night. She put on this little blue chiffon dress that I have, and uh, I just. I don't know the cheese, but I think women are. Uh, I think a lot of women like romantic men. You like a romantic man? See, I consider myself. I consider myself a romantic man. Because uh, on a cold rainy night, night like tonight, I like to uh, build a fire and get a bearskin rug and a bottle of wine and uh, buck naked, uh, penthouse magazine. And uh, <laughs> my girlfriend told me I'm not a very good lover. And uh, yeah, she did. Uh, really though, how can you tell in just two minutes? You know, you really. <laughs> Four 
14 in dog minutes, that's the way I say this. So. <laughs> Considering some of the women I've gone out with, which I'm pretty well going to think of, but, uh, I think most men want to be good lovers, I really do, but you know, if you think about it, guys, I mean, what's the point in trying? I mean, even if you last all night, she probably has something out of the bed that's guaranteed to last 90 days, so... <laughs> Be with Panasonic, can you? So, uh, I go for became obsessed with her vibrator, and uh, which was kind of strange because uh, I, you know, how I found out. Got to the point every time we made love, she asked me to go really fast and make a humming noise. <laughs> I like these ads in the backs of mag magazines for these vibrators. For the uh, vibrators, woman's using it on her neck. Like the woman goes into the pharmacist and says. Excuse me, my neck's a little stiff. Do you have anything about 12 inches long and a vibrator shaped like a man's penis? Uh, a lot of women are looking for rich men now, giving up on love and going after a rich man. And uh, hey, I don't blame you. I really don't, because I gotta admit, uh, right now, rich men are looking good to me. <laughs>